What's up, what's up, everybody? It's Inside the Green Room, presented to you by Jack in the Box. I'm Danny Green, my co-host Harrison Sanford, and we've been blessed to have another former Laker, Pau Gasol. Uh, we appreciate you, man, uh, jumping on, taking your time. Uh, your busy schedule, I know you have a lot going on, so appreciate you taking your time out, man. Absolutely, man. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's always nice to, nice to catch up and, uh, and see what you got going on. For sure. Uh, we actually, it's crazy because I was thinking we had your brother on before. We haven't got a chance. To, and I've been your teammate first before I got him as a mm-hmm. teammate. And we had your brother right. on. And he was, he was great in telling me how much he loved uh, gardening and all different types of stuff that he, he did. Um, do you garden mm-hmm. by any chance? No. Nah. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Mark, Mark is more, more into that uh, than I am. Uh, never really had the time to do it. You know, I keep myself a little busier than Mark. Uh, <laughs> uh, so his, our lifestyles are a little different. Uh, and what we do with our time off is a little different. Uh, I love, you know, I love the concept of gardening. Um, well, you have, you have time now. So with the time you have now, have you picked up any other hobbies besides, you know, the business side of basketball and phone calls? You, obviously, you stay in shape and still working out. Yeah. Um, have you tried anything else besides uh you know, the usual athletic stuff? Not really. <laughs> Not really. I, what, I, what, I, what I've been doing a lot more is, is writing articles, doing more interviews, kind of uh, utilize my platforms in order to, to create a awareness uh, of what we're going through right now, sending out positive messages. I've been doing a lot more video content for our foundation, uh, what we like to call try to promote a healthy quarantine right now um, and the importance so, of establishing a routine. So, all that, that's what I've been doing a lot more of. So, been, dope, been dope, dope. So, uh, you've been writing. So, you're starting to write articles. Uh, tell mm-hmm. us about, obviously, tell us about the writing and also tell us about your, uh, your mission with Red Cross, uh, with Raphael, and, and why it's important to you. Mm-hmm. Well, writing, we, I was, uh, we would be writing articles for, uh, for Players Tribune mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, and kind of uh, how, uh, how we're in this together and how to, you know, that we might be in confinement or isolated, but uh, we, got, we all got to do our part and we got to learn the lessons that, uh, um, that this tr- craziness is, are, is bringing or are bring, is bringing to us. So, uh, so that's one thing. I've been writing articles also for a paper in Spain, uh, kind of the same concept, um, trying to create awareness, give my perspective, uh, open people's eyes, encourage people to continue to practice social dis- distancing and, and understand the, the gravity of, of this coronavirus. And then, um, and then as far as the, the initiative that we, that we kind of launched with uh, Rafa in, in Spain, what we talked is like, okay, we got to do something about this. Uh, you know, we, we've been so blessed to do what we have done and, and do with our careers and, how, and all the love that we have received throughout our, our all many years. It's time to step up and, and lead some type of, of movement, a, a coordinated effort, and kind of uh, encourage all sports, all athletes, all our partners to, uh, to raise uh, $12 million to be able to reach 1.35 million people in Spain who are most affected by the crisis. So uh, it's been an incredible initiative. Uh, more than 100, 200 athletes have chipped in. Um, it's been really, you know, inspiring. And that's what we were trying to do, you know, create a movement and, and kind of uh, lead a movement here for, for the benefit or in benefit of, of the most affected by the crisis. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, Harrison, you had a question? Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, pal, obviously, as we go throughout the course of the show, we want to touch yeah. on your experience with the Lakers. Obviously, we want to talk about the championship years with you and Kobe, as well as uh, looking back at Mark's championship from last year. But before we we get to that point, uh, you're you're originally from Spain. There's a lot of players in the NBA who have family members all over the globe. Obviously, Danny, most of his family is based in the United States. Can you take us through uh, what it is, how you handled this pandemic and how players are handling this pandemic, the ones with international families, the ones with uh, fit that are not only based in, in America. Well, it's it's hard uh, to be away from each other, especially during a time of struggle. And uh, all you can do is to be in touch with them, um, try to have um, good, positive com- conversations, be supportive, uh, be encouraging, and 
you know, um, just just uh, just be in touch as much as you can through technology, right? So, uh, but it, but it's hard because you're you know it's uh, there's there's so much uncertainty. Uh, there's such a big threat out there, this invisible enemy that we're fighting or we're facing right now. So it's um, you know it's tough to be away, even if we were. Even if we were in the same, obviously, you would feel closer if you were in the same city or the same state or the same country. Uh, but being far, you you feel a little powerless, um, and um, and it's 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 tough. So you, right now, you just you know, like I said, do what you can do, uh, control what you can control, uh, try to, like I said, um, send positive messages to them, to be supportive, uh, trying to have longer conversations than usual, um, be more nurturing, um, but. Um, but that, that's, a, that's about it, you know, and try to um, make sure that everyone kind of comes out of this alive and, um, and well uh, to as much as or as big a degree as you can. Yeah, it's tough, man. You, you speak on how powerless you feel when you say you have family members. And luckily, and Harrison, me and Harrison are both from New York, and it's a hotbed right now. A lot of our family, my family is good. I don't know. If I haven't checked on Harrison. I think Harrison's family is good as well. Uh, but a lot of our family's friends are passing away and they have, they can't do nothing about it, man. And it's tough. Uh, but go ahead, Harrison, you had a, you had a, yeah, going back to, you know, controlling to controlling what you can control. How does this pandemic, how did that, how is it impacting your rehab mission right now? Well, it's, it's definitely, you know, it's bought me some time. It's given me some extra time. Um, but it's definitely also probably slowing, slowing it down a little, uh, which we'll see if it's good or bad at the end. Um, but uh, but definitely I, had, I cannot access and, and do the testing that I needed to, to get done a few weeks ago in order to kind of follow up uh, with the rehab and the healing of my foot. Um, you know, I can't, I can't access certain facilities and equipment that I would like to at this point. I try not to think about what I cannot do, uh, what I should be doing or could have been doing, but what I can do at home with the material and the equipment that I do have and, and just try to pos- uh, look at it from a positive angle, you know, and just giving me a little more time. Um, we'll see how this thing kind of plays out and when things kind of resume themselves and when we can basketball can go back to a certain level of activity, uh, whether it's without fans first uh, and then progressively with fans with restrictions or certain measures and stuff and so forth. Um, I'm sure they'll figure that out. Um, but uh I just control, again, control what I can and try to get myself healthy. That's my goal, number one, to have the opportunity potentially to go back and play. Coming up next on Inside the Green Room. He no, didn't care who's out there. If, if it was his grandma, he'd probably try to run through her. You know, Absolutely. Like, like, if, it, if, it, if, it meant, if it meant that the, her, his grandma would have been between him and the gold medal, yeah, uh, that's it. it, it it's, like I said, it's, it's business. He was a cold-blooded uh, competitor. think that there's a point in your life somewhere down the road where you want to go back and maybe be involved in politics or some sort of philanthropy outside of your foundation yeah yeah for sure no I've, i mean i've been i've been doing that already and and once once i you know hang it up uh, for good uh I'll, I'll i'll be in some type of leadership position i I'll try hopefully not not a lot of pol- politics will be involved but there's always politics you know I, even even in uh, if I went on the route of being an executive in the NBA, there's, there's politics and within teams and organizations and so forth. Uh, you know, I'm a candidate also for the IOC, so oh, for the cool. Athletes Commission in the, in the IOC. So I'm I'm presenting myself, and uh, the voting was going to happen during the Olympics in Tokyo this summer, but it's going to happen n- next summer. Mm-hmm. So that's another way that I want to continue to have impact across all sports uh, within the Olympic movement. So again, I'm always going to be doing that. Uh, I've been a Google ambassador for UNICEF for 17 years, uh, many trips to Africa and in other in other places, Bangladesh, Lebanon, uh, Iraq, uh, you name it. So I, you know, this is something that it's in me. It's just part of me. It's just who I am. Speaking of the Olympics, <laughs> um, are you still hoping to participate if it's pushed back to 2021? If they change the calendar, well, well, it's still in my mind. But uh, like I said, my, my first goal right now is to try to try to figure out and find out whether my foot can can hold up and, mm-hmm. and heal, and if I can put it through, um, you know, high level competition. So if I can, 
uh, then what would need to happen is I will have to play competitive basketball for next season. What we think of a next season, uh, we, we don't know when that's going to, when that's going to happen and how that's going to look. But, uh, but for next season, I will have to, you know, play uh, in order to get to summer 2021 and, and be, be in a, in a good place to compete and help my country. Uh, so that's still very much in my mind. Um, but again, I have to figure out and find out whether, whether my foot uh, can heal and sustain uh, the effort in the grind of uh, 82 uh, regular season and potential playoffs. You know, you know Powell, you, you bring that up. Uh, if the NBA season resumes, uh, there's a thought that it's going to impact the scheduling for the following season, which would mm-hmm. potenti- we're potentially looking at December 25th around Christmas time until mm-hmm. mid-August or so, mid to late August. So mm-hmm. going forward, if they, let's say the NBA keeps that schedule and there are some people proponents who want that schedule going forward because mm-hmm. the NBA doesn't have to go head to head with the NFL as much. It's a better thing for ratings, profitability mm-hmm. of the league. The right. negative side of that would mean that there are going to be a number of NBA players, whether they're from the United States or they're from Spain or they're from mm-hmm. France or wherever, right. that right. won't be able to play in the Olympics. Right. How, what do you think about the potential of not playing in the Olympics for NBA players? And do you think that's something that would you have accepted if it was if that is proposed? Well, that, that, it'll be interesting to see how the different leagues, competitions, organizations uh, will kind of negotiate and try to fit everything in and not have not overstep each other. Um, so I would see more probably a negotiation somehow uh, of of not trying to mess up the chances of any athletes and any players to participate in the Olympics, which would start in July 23rd, as it is announced as in today. Um, and to maybe have a short, if the, the NBA did resume in December, let's say, or, or started the next season uh, in December, that it would be a shortened schedule, you know, instead of an 82, a 52, uh, maybe potentially. Uh, so the league uh, on the finals wouldn't have to end in August and it would end, you know, maybe in late June or early July, let's say. So, um, and then the possibilities would, would be fine there, even though it was more compact and so forth. But, but they, they, they'll figure it out. You know, right now there's so much unknown. You can mm-hmm. only think of scenarios, hypotheses. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's difficult right now. And uh, I was watching an interview yesterday from Mark Cuban. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, the health organi- organizations and the scientists will determine when things will kind of go back to a certain level of activity and normality. Speaking of the Olympics, I want to, now we're going to transition a little bit here and try to have a little bit more fun. Uh, So I want to look back Mm. at the uh, 2008 Olympics. Mm. Uh, You were there. Kobe Bryant obviously was playing for Team USA. I think we have a clip uh, that that was a little bit grainy. You know, this is way Mm. back. But uh, do you you remember the moment when Kobe... Kind yeah, of right here. I do, I do, I do, <laughs> I do remember. Yeah, no, it's it's a great clip. Uh, it's a great moment. I think it 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 really puts in an image or a clip uh, how Kobe approached uh, games, basketball, uh, competition, and, and how he was just setting the tone and sending a message to me and to his teammates. Uh, and he deliberately, in his mind. <laughs> you know, did that, you know, uh, and I'm sure he thought about that before, even before the game or the day before the game, uh, <laughs> thinking like the first chance I get, I'm going to go do this mm, and, uh, chest and I'm just going to put him on his ass. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's what it's going to be. He didn't, even, he never tried to get around the screen. He just went right through me and he said, I'll take the foul. And it's kind of one of those things. I'll take the foul. It's fine. Uh, but I'm going to send a message and this is, uh, and this is what's, this is what's up. So he just set the tone, you know, it was great because um, as in, in a way, what, uh, what he remember him telling me is like he told Dwight Howard, I think it was in the team, and Chris Bosh, just, just beat the crap out of him all game long, be extra <laughs> physical with him, just, just wear him out. Just every chance you get, just hit him, hit him, hit him. And that's, you know, and that's kind of how he showed them, this is how you hit him. You know, this yeah. is what it's going to take. <laughs> let's, let's take. Let's take him out. Um, so anyway, yeah, he, it was, uh, it's a great clip. It is. It shows his competitive side to the fullest, man. In one clip, it just shows you. He said, "Y'all, y'all had just 
I don't know that year y'all had. Um, yeah, we lost. We lost the finals against uh, Celtics. Y'all had just six. played in the finals together. Mm-hmm. Y'all been on the team for a couple. Y'all are brothers, and he runs <laughs> straight through your chest, no hesitation. This right. is like he no, doesn't care who's business. out there. If, if it was his grandma, he'd probably try to run through her. You know, Absolutely. Man, like, if, like, if, it, if it meant if it meant that the her, his grandma would have been between him and the gold medal, yeah, uh, that's it. it. It's it's like I said, it's it's business. He was a cold blooded uh, competitor, and uh, he set the tone um, for for generations. I think different generations to to show him the way how it's done. For sure. Um, besides yeah. the besides the Olympic, obviously the Olympics and that play, uh, I'm sure you have some better on the good side moments of you guys together sharing the court. So many, yeah. um, what sticks out when you think about him? Like what's the main couple things, main, the most favorite memories uh, and the, you know, so the habits that stick about him and sharing a locker room in the court with him. I mean, his work ethic was mm-hmm. uh, unparalleled and unmatched. Um, he, uh, he was just determined and, and, and obsessed with being the best and at all times, uh, and he just put in the work, you know, the extra work. It didn't matter what time it was. It didn't matter. He didn't sleep that much. So whenever he woke up, he had that itch of, and that obsessiveness of, I'm, I'm just going to take this time to work, you know, to go to the gym, to get some shots, to go to hit the weight room. It's, it's something so, so unique, but he studied it. Uh, he, you know, he studied MJ, um, from the very beginning, you know, he wanted in order to become or, or be the best, you have to study the best. And he just studied, prepared, prepared, and he was in his mind at all times. And we would have dinner and it would be 11 PM midnight to say, oh, I'm going to hit the weight room. When you're thinking about like, Shh, I'm, I'm just ready to hit the bed, you know, <laughs> I'm tired. You know, it doesn't even cross your mind to, to try to hit the weight room or anything <laughs> like that. But he would, he would do that uh, at, at pretty much at all times. And it, it was just, incredible and it's just spoke of how much he wanted it how badly he wanted to be the best to win and and it was inspiring it was contagious you know it was uh it was just like you had to try to get close to that level and he brought the best of a lot of the guys you know including myself uh he brought a different level to to everyone because he said that tone coming up next on inside the green room so you know Ron, it's it Meta is, is a fantastic, I think, a great, great human being. Uh, just good heart. For sure, man. And you don't, like you said, you don't really appreciate it as much or realize as much until you watch the games later on. Mm-hmm. Right. Win or lose, yeah. even when we lost in the finals 2013, I didn't realize how big of a platform and how hard it is to get there and, the, and obviously yeah. the wins too. Let's jump into the made to order segment brought to you by Jack in the Box. We have a full menu of questions for Danny Green about maybe the Lakers, his life, things he likes to do off the court. How does this team stay so locked in despite all the outside noise from the media and throughout the league and keep that eye on the ultimate goal, which is the NBA championship? We have so many veterans on our team, um, so many guys that have experience, playoff experience, um, that they know how to handle social media, handle the media that uh, the only focus, the only important uh, opinion is inside our locker room. And we make sure that we stay together, we're on the same page, and don't hear outside noise or focus on outside noise or let it even distract our main team goal. Uh, so it takes some years and, and, and some days and games of maturity, uh, but we have plenty of those on our team, plenty of guys with that type of experience. Danny Green, your overall is 77 in 2K20. <laughs> what do you think it should be? <laughs> Um, 77 rating, I don't know how good or bad that is, but I think that's pretty solid for the most part. Obviously, would love to have it higher, would love to be better. And I'm still working on being better, not just in video games, but in real life. Uh, but yeah, there's a pretty good sh- uh, shot right there. Your release sometimes it pisses, it pisses me off. I feel like it pisses a lot of people <laughs> off. People can't really get my release. No, Mind you, my it's release not is, easy. It's complicated, <laughs> not just in the video game. Uh, in real life, it's not as smooth uh, as most other shooters. You know, it's not as, pre- I guess, as pretty as other people would think. But, um, you know, it works for me. Some guys just figure out what works for them. But 77 is not bad. I definitely said I would like to get in the 80s. Question number three, and Danny, I'm sorry. We had to do this to you. Okay, we'll see what, what they got coming. 
I want to know what were you thinking? Game six, 2013 NBA oh, Finals, God. when Ray Allen hits the shot to send the game of to course, OT. He, of course, somebody had to ask this one. You know, I, I try to eliminate that from my mind and forget about it, but it's something you never forget because uh, it's always a championship you feel like that you could have had. And uh, when the ball went up and I saw that, you know, Chris Bosch got the rebound, I was just hoping I can get there. Somebody got the rebound. When I saw him kick out to Ray Allen, I was just thought, damn, uh, this is not good. And uh, I was like, this is not good for us. And then he hit the shot, and I, I knew it was bad. It was bad news all around for us. Um, it was a tough game to bounce back from. It still is. It's something that said we'll never forget, but uh, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare in real time. Oh, I, I could appreciate the honesty. And we'll hopefully you could make up for it in a final season. That would be nice. Uh, I've been still trying to make up for that since that day. Um, <laughs> I've been lucky enough to win, you know, two since then. Uh, but even with winning two, it still hurts that you could have had that other one. All right, Mr. Green. I have a couple quick questions. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Green. One, are you a fan of the WWE? <laughs> I like how his approach to these questions. He's all laid, first he approached me in a professional in Mr. Green manner, but he's laid back in his, in his ladies' man's voice, trying to be all smooth. I don't, I'm like, okay, I'm a little confused here. But uh, great question. I was a fan of the WWE when I was younger, as, yep. a, as a child. Don't name your players just yet. I won't. Uh, I used these to watch the, the Royal shit. Rumbles. I used to watch all of the, the, the guys fight. Um, it, it was a lot of fun back then, and I used to obviously imitate those moves with my brothers and friends, jumping off the top ropes, you know, doing all the types of stone cold stunners. What would your finishing move be if you were perhaps <laughs> looking like this as a WWE wrestler? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Razor Ramon? No, Jake that, the you, Snake? No, you don't see that stone cold. Oh, okay. Look at that, you got the green 316. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't see the 316 over there. But yeah, I mean. <laughs> what's that, what's that, what's that wrestler's it, name? Man. Stone Cold, Stone Cold Green. Steve Austin. Stone, Green, well, Green Austin. Well, we got to, it's your name now. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> That's a good one. I'd have to come up with something better. Obviously, I think a lot of people stick and look at me as the Green Ranger. So yeah. Something up, I, everybody talks to each other now from IG names. Nobody knows anybody's real name anymore. But there's one, but there's another one we got too. Yeah? Yeah. What we got? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Jake the Snake. <laughs> yeah. uh, with Hulk Hogan. With Hulk Hogan, Razor Ramon. Finish move. That's a better finish move right there. Like how a the little, snake uh, is just appropriately wrapped around. Uh, a little constriction. Yeah. You know, that's a better that's a better move. But I, I definitely have to come up with something cooler. Uh, Soul Cold Center was cool. Yeah. People's Elbow was cool. Undertaker had, you know, a, a good one. Uh, Ray Mysterio, I had fun watching. Who was Goldberg. He was an animal. Uh, <laughs> Ultimate Warrior. They had some good moves, man. I'd have to figure out something cooler with a name and a finishing move than, you know, just the Jake the Snake or, you know, I mean, Stone Cold had a good one, but Constriction, I don't know if that's a good finishing move. Yeah, it's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have to come up with a finishing name for yeah. a three-point shot for you at some point. Yeah, Hit a sure. crutch one, we'll give it a name. For, for those of you who did not see this episode or did not see it because you're listening to the audio version of it, make sure you check us out on YouTube. This is Made to Order, brought to you by Jack in the Box. Make sure you send all your questions to Inside the Green Room or follow us on at Gmail or follow us on social media at Inside Green Room or Green Room Inside on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So you can send Danny all of your videos, remind him of all his past successes. And as one of our friends did, remind him of a failure as well. It's all fair game, right? Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's all fair. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>、Uh, we spoke with Ron Artest, Metal World Peace. What, what did you, first, first off, what did you call him? <laughs> well, first I call him Ron.、Uh, <laughs> and I think Meta came later. So, you know, it was hard to call him Meta. And he was fine with you calling him Ron, Ron Ron, <laughs> or, or, or whatever.、Uh, it, so it was hard to transition into, into, that, into that new name. <laughs> Uh, now I call him Meta and it's, it's, it's all good, you know?、So. Okay. <laughs> and his friend, I almost called him Penn. I was like, hey, you have so many names now, Ron. I didn't know what to call them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we spoke to him about the 2010 championship after beating the Celtics, and he gave us、uh, an epic story about his keeping yeah, his celebration. He kept his warm ups on, he still had jersey on. 
still had the finger tape when they went to the club. He said they went, he went to about five different clubs and he went to the studio <laughs> and recorded a track with Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you can't take us there because you have to be a member of that championship team to actually live those moments. But can you give us a snippet uh, and visualize, help us visualize what that championship night was like after beating the Celtics? Uh, it was it was one of the obviously highlights of my life and I, just my career. Um, uh, I actually rewatched the game for the first time in ten years the other day when ABC aired it uh, about about ten days ago, and I actually had a chance to talk. Uh, Meta uh, hit me up also and said, "Hey, uh, I'd like to you know talk to you through my Zoom channel or whatever it was." And <laughs> and it's like, "Okay, okay, well let's let's do it." And we actually talked just like we're talking right now, <laughs> and, and and uh, and we kind of caught up and and it was kind of fun to do that. Um, but uh, it was an extremely special moment. What I, I now that I rewatched the game, I could appreciate. And I told him like the, the effort that he put in defensively, he uh, hit some big shots, made some big plays, but that's kind of what it took, you know, everyone kind of doing their part at the end of the day, when you win a championship against a great team, whoever you're facing, because they, they have to be great in order to be in the finals. Everyone has to chip in and do their part, you know, uh, defensive plays, rebounds, shots, uh, you know, whatever it is, there's always something that you can do and uh, and, uh, and that's what happened that, that night. We just, uh, we just wouldn't give up. And even though we were down and the Celtics were, you know, a great team, we, we believed in ourselves and, and everyone kind of came through. <clears throat> so uh, Meta was, you know, hit a big three at the end, as you guys know. He, we went through a couple of plays, uh, one of me on the post kind of shooting, uh, turning around baseline and, and then screaming like I was completely possessed, which I probably was at the time. And then, but I remind, I reminded him also of an, the previous play when I was in the post and he cut into the lane and I hit him and he finished with his left and uh, and one prior to the, to the three. Left so hand. just, just a lot yeah. of big, yeah, he loved his left hand. He would dunk yeah. better with his left yeah. than with his right. Uh, he would uh, sneak up on you sometimes. Um, so, um, so, you know, it was just, uh, I was just so happy for him too. Uh, and how he thanked his family and when Doris Burke interviewed him and thanked his psychiatrist uh, for, for helping him through through the process and how that's important, you know, the mental health aspect of it. Um, so he was one of the probably the first ones that I remember actually talking about that, too, before before he, did, he started becoming a more of a normal thing. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so you know, Ron, it's, and Meta is, is a fantastic, I think, great, great human being, uh, just good heart, you know, good hearted guy. For sure, man. And you don't, like you said, you don't really appreciate it as much or realize as much until you watch the games later on, right. win or lose. Even when we lost in the finals 2013, I didn't realize how big of a platform and how hard it is to get there and, the, and yeah. obviously the wins too. Coming up next on Inside the Green Room. I like the balance of your team, but obviously experience in the playoffs with, you know, with the guys that you guys have, with uh, yourself, with LeBron, with uh, Rondo. Uh, I think Anthony Davis has already enough experience in the playoffs that he can, you know, he can take it to a next level. Now we're gonna get into some fun before we let you go, man. We had a couple fun ones. Um, but first, we want to take us back. So you and Mark were the first brothers to win NBA titles. Mm -hmm. um, we want to take you back um, at the cele Mark celebration versus yours. Oh, there's, there's a clip. <laughs> I'm sure this is not the first time you've uh, been discussed this, no. but uh, we're going to take you back. There's, a, there's definitely a clip. We have Mark, and this was iconic. This guy. I think this one is pow. Look how okay, this calm is he is. Yeah, you can tell. I'm always, I've always been calm, under control. <laughs> you know, I'm. I'm so on the court, on the court, you're very passionate. Yeah. On the court, man. On the yeah. court, you're very passionate. But you could tell you you yeah. won a lot in your career from watching this. You know, it's just you know, a couple of times. I've won a couple of times. I've been here. I'll probably come back again. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, you know, he's he's played some years in the league. Has not ever about seen the final stage, and I think he showed it. <laughs> I may not ever he get back. He showed it. This is it. <laughs> so this is his celebration. Is like. <laughs> <laughs> epic <laughs> iconic celebration man and and I, I to his defense it was not his fault that the the sun and the alcohol we were out there three hours longer than we were supposed to be and yeah. you know we needed that energy and mark 
definitely brought set it. the tone and brought that <laughs> brought energy it. and kept it going the yeah. entire parade. Where's the rosé? Yeah. I waited for the rosé. Here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> When, I, when, I, when, I, when they asked me about it, I was in, in Barcelona and I had a press <laughs> conference the day after um, <laughs> announcing a deal with FC Barcelona uh, in our foundation, you know, and uh, mm. all, the, all the media and reporters <laughs> asked me, it's like, hey, what do you think about your brother chugging a bottle of champagne? Uh, it's like, what, what do you mean? How do I know it's champagne? It could be, could be grapefruit juice. Yeah. <laughs> all I know, you know, how, how do you know? I don't know. You know. By his actions, I, I think it was champagne. By the way, yeah. he was celebrating. Yeah. But it, the crazy thing, he was like, "Yeah, I'm. I'm all, I got to be on a plane in seven hours. He's. Like, I'm going back to, to Spain. I'm like, you're mm-hmm. leave, You're getting on a flight, which is with your wife and the kids, and five yeah. or six hours. I'm like, good luck, man. Uh, with that, that, that flight, <laughs> he probably but, passed out. He probably, yeah, he probably the slept away. the whole flight. He, but he, he had a hell of a celebration. Man. We're not doing it the right way. Next time, I if, if I get a chance to win, if we get back the season back. If I get a chance to win another one, I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, I got to do an Kinda. honor of, of Mark, man. There you go. Yes. Um, yeah. DG, right. can he, you, knows, yes. he, knows, he knows how to have fun. He knows how D- to celebrate. DG, can you remind Pal of the speeches that were take, that took place during the championship parade? Oh, oh Cause yeah. Because you, you sat next to him. I, I, did. Am I, right? I did. And um, this is when I knew he could not go on stage. Um, so everybody's supposed to go up and say something. Obviously, the starters. Right, right. right. Uh, but there was a point where I was like, we cannot give Mark the mic. Oh, oh, we can't give him the mic because he might say something crazy. Um, he's telling jokes in my ear, and I'm like, okay, I'm laughing. But then out of nowhere, I feel something bite me. And I'm like, what? Oh! And it's Mark. He's chewing on my damn shoulder. And I'm like, oh, we can't. I was like, we can't give him the mic. I'm like, we got to pass it to someone else. So I, yeah, I was just, I mean, mind you, I don't think he'd say anything crazy and said, but I just wanted to save him from going up there and, you know. He would have just, he would have just screamed or something. He would have yeah, just screamed and <laughs> like, like crazy. But he I was like, just screamed, yeah. Well, let me save I him to so the celebrate or save him from, you know, doing anything too doing crazy. Anything too, too, yeah, overly. He would have just probably jumped on the, into the crowd. Jumped into the yeah, crowd surf. Yeah, just, <laughs> and might have, might have killed a couple people. Man, he's, having, he's having a hell of a time. He was dancing. It was a fun time, man. Yeah, All right. So the last two before we let you go, man. Um, name the four, name four players outside of yourself, with yourself, mm-hmm. um, a starting lineup that you would, that your, your favorite guys to play with, that you would bring to any, to Spain, to the Olympics, to mm-hmm. NBA. Your top four players. From point guard, obviously you being the five or four, if you want to put yourself with the four, the top mm-hmm. four players that you, and favorite players you've played with at, at other four positions. Oof, uh, man. Well, that I played with, uh, I guess. Um, you play with some great. Uh, he's got, he's got yeah, so many, he's got so yeah, many options. guys. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 it's I'm, a I'm tough thinking one. about his ones. He's got like Derrick Rose. He's got Ricky. He's got so I'm like, I got, I got Damian. Well, Damian, I didn't get to play with. Uh, yeah. I got Tony TP. Yeah. Also, um, Ricky from the Olympics. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ricky. Yeah. Uh, I got. Um, We'll see if I uh, yeah, play with the guys. Well, in 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 Memphis, I played with uh, some good. Good point, guys. Even even though Mike Conley and Kyle Lowry were mm-hmm. rookies when I uh, mm-hmm. when I was in Memphis, but I played with them and they they become great great point guards too. So um, La Bamba, La Bamba, it's more of a shooting guard. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so uh, and he's my you know he's one of my best friends and I played with him since I was sixteen. So if I really went for like people that I you know really you know care about your and favorites, uh, your favorites, yeah, man, your favorites. yeah, not even not even uh, the best, but your favorites, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so I'll probably go with Mark, uh, you know, four or five, depending <laughs> of when, at what point of our careers we find ourselves in. Um, um, then Kobe would have to, we have to be there. Um, probably, probably Juan Carlos Navarro, because um, my, my best friend and we grew up together. And I would have to have one more. Yeah, small forward at the three. Yeah. Small yeah. forward at three position. I mean, you know, you guys know. I mean, I played played with Kawhi. I played with Jimmy Butler. Uh, I played with you know Meta too, and uh, and I played with Shane Shane Battier, Mac Miller when uh, in their younger younger mm-hmm. days when um, when they were like go to guys um, yeah. too, and so I played played with some great ones. Um, uh, and, and then my national team guys also, you know, I love them too, you know. So, um, Rudy Fernandez is one of my, also my guy. 
Uh, favorites is probably and, and, Rick, and Ricky, Ricky, <laughs> Ricky. We can act. We can add Ricky, and then have or Navarro, Juan Carlos, and um, and Kobe at the three. Okay, so okay. we had yeah, we should have gave Power a starting <laughs> five and a, and a bench. We had to give him a bench. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you gotta give him a whole team. When you play 20 years, years, yeah, you play yeah, 20 so years. It's a lot of you years. Give, you gotta give a guy two squads. You can't <laughs> give one. Yeah, pretty, that would be nice. Play with hell of people, man. <laughs> Thank you. That's um, great. H, you wanna uh, close out the last question? I think we got one more. What do we got? Go ahead. You, you take uh, the last one. And then, and then you were a great teammate, by the way. Appreciate FYI. it, man. Thank oh, yeah. You're one of my all-time great. Put me on the third team. I got you. I understand. You know, I got you. I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you all, all day. I, I'll take you with my teammate any day. I appreciate that, man. Any I know you guys have some great long-time friends, some great teammates. Yeah. Friends, so I, I put myself Thanks. the third tier back burner. I'm cool with that. No, you're back. You're back. On, you're, my, you're on my second team. You're on my Scout team. Scout team. Appreciate that, man. That's higher than I That's higher than I would have put myself But But, uh, H, close out. Yeah, so, pal, uh, last question here, and obviously the health of uh, the entire world is more important than basketball. Um, but what do you – do you anticipate a scenario where the NBA comes back? And if it does, um, if you could entertain us, who would be your MVP pick and who do you think would win it? Now, obviously, you still have affiliations and loyalties. Right. So right, right. if you could just step away from the Blazers affiliation, any loyalty you might have. Yeah, no, it'll, it'll be objective. It'll, it'll be so, somewhere objective. <laughs> and I know you yeah. played, and you've played with Yan- the you Lakers. Played with Giannis, with Giannis and, yeah, yeah, so yeah you, I have affiliations with everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. And the, but if you could, and the Raptors, my brothers, there. Yeah. You know, there you go. If you could I wipe away right. as many biases as you have, and give us uh, an objective answer. Uh, yeah. to that uh, I, to me yeah. you know I mean um, I, I like the Lakers I, I've, I've liked how how, the, how you know the Lakers have played those probably two thirds or three quarters of the season um, I, I love how the veteran leadership of the team um, I love how they how you guys you know and, and Danny being a, a player now in the roster uh, how you guys play big and how you cover so much ground and you dominate uh, the pain, but also surround uh, the three-point line with shooters. So I, I like the balance of your team, but obviously experience in the playoffs with you know with the guys that you guys have, with uh, yourself, with LeBron, with uh, Rondo. Uh, I think Anthony Davis has already enough experience in the playoffs that he can you know he can take it to a next level. I think that might give you an, an edge. Obviously, you have to get go through. Or you would have to go through hypothetically speaking that if if the players resumed uh, in a normal shape or form, you know, through the the Nuggets are young and talented, and through the Clippers are uh, also well equipped, but <clears throat> you know, in a potential finals with the Bucks, which are my other team that I consider uh, favorite, um, you know, you would have that edge over them. I think, even though I you know I, I love their team and they're obviously. Uh, very talented as well. Um, so it will be a fun finals to watch. I think that that's what we're all kind of hoping for in a way. Me, it's now as a fan, as a player that it's rehabbing and not really a part of or with contractually attached to any team. Um, so I would enjoy watching that. Uh, but um, so let's hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll happen. I know the NBA, it's going to do its very best to, for that to, to, to happen and for for the season to finish, whichever way, obviously you have to earn uh, your spot uh, in uh, in finals and, and to win championships. Is they're not given to you? No one will hand them out. Uh, you have to earn them. So, uh, but I think you know the Lakers would have a little bit of a of an edge over everyone by if everyone stays healthy and uh, and things go the right the right way. I like your answer, man. I, I can't say I <laughs> can't say I would disagree, but I, I think we had a pretty good shot before it all ended. It all, hopefully, we're going to get back. No, you're... Uh, interested that you picked Milwaukee uh, coming out the East. Well, not interested, but obviously Milwaukee. But I know you right. probably get some from your brother for, for picking Milwaukee over Toronto. Well, that's, that's okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I I just that, and that's why when last year when I uh, got out of San Antonio uh, and I went and signed with Milwaukee, it's because I I believe they had it. A, a true chance, mm. you know, uh, to come out of the East and, and win what you guys took uh, last year, but uh, with the Raptors. So, um, unfortunately, my, my foot went the other way and I couldn't help the team and complemented what they already had 
which uh, in my mind I, I was I was going to be able to do, mm-hmm. and it would have been fun to play that conference finals against you guys and, and go head to head and and see what happens, right? So uh, uh, it didn't play out that way, and obviously I was still very happy for for you guys, and because I know so many of the uh, of the roster players and and staff uh, mm-hmm. from the Raptors, so I, I was happy for you guys, um, but. Uh, you know, that's, I still think that, uh, you know, and, and you, you have to see it, you know, see it happen but sure. again this year. Um, but I, I still believe that the, you know, they're, they're a special team and now it's, can they be, can they take it to that next level? Right. And they mm-hmm. actually, you know, get it done uh, on crunch time, playoff time uh, against uh, teams as the Raptors that know how to play them very, very well defensively and match up against them well. Yeah, man. Like you said, uh, not many teams. So it would have been interesting to see, man, if you were healthy. Not many teams, like you said, nowadays go big uh, and, you know, mix up the, the lineup. Uh, that's what I liked about our team, too. Dwight and yeah. JaVel were clutch JaVel, for us, yeah. been key for us all season. But, oh, um, great. Yeah, man. Um, sorry, went over a little bit, uh, but you sorry. gave us some great insight, man. You always, you know, you're a great talker, man. You always give us some good information. I just want to thank Hello. you, man, for the, taking the time. We really appreciate you. Uh, give Hello. the family – our best, uh, especially the ones over in Spain. Um, Kat, tell Kat I said hello. Um, I will. We'll do. And, uh, right, same, you know, same to Blair. Hopefully get a chance everyone, to man. Yeah, so catch up soon. Uh, face the ones this is all over. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once this is all done, hopefully get a chance to catch up face-to-face, come back out to L.A. And, um, you know, c- maybe you never know. It might be in a roster or something. You never know. I never so, know. You never know. But uh, enjoy your time off, man. Enjoy the Thank family. You, Keep them close. And I uh, yes. appreciate it once again, pal, man. Well, a lot of love, man, from the side. Same, same to you, man. Stay safe, okay, guys. Because we'll we'll get through this, and uh, and we'll get back to uh, you know uh, to a certain normality soon, hopefully. And uh, but let's just get get through it safe, okay? Definitely.